this thing has options for that. This cat's about to knock this right. There it went. It's on the floor now, cat. All right, welcome to the first episode of TDD and P-O-N-G, or just Pong. It's it's not P-O-N-G, it's just Pong. Uh, we're going to make Pong. We're going to take a test-driven development approach to creating Pong using the Godot Engine version 3.1 and the Gut Unit Testing Framework version 6.7.0. So in this episode, we're going to install Gut. We're going to create a ball. We're going to test the living daylights out of it. We're going to watch the ball move. And then we'll be done for this episode. We'll cover some fun stuff along the way. And that's about it. So let's get right into it. Uh, first thing we got to do is we got to install gut. I'm going to go through it real quick. There's a there's at least one other tutorial out there. If this if I go too fast, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go over the asset library. Um, I'm working with uh, Godot 3.1 here. Uh, search for gut. Click this. Click download. Click install. We want all of the stuff. Say OK, go over to Plugins, and activate. Okay. So in our directory, we got nothing. Uh, we got gut now. We're going to go ahead and make test, uh, test unit. All right, that should be good for now. Let me go back over here. We go to our scene. We're gonna throw in a node 2D. Um, I'm gonna call this tests, and we're gonna add a gut. There we go. We're gonna save this under tests, and let's run it. All right, we ran. All right, let's look at the properties. We're gonna run on load. Uh, I want it to maximize. We are going to add the test unit directory. And that's it. Let's run it again real quick. Cool. No test found. Nothing run. Okay. Well, the first thing we need is we need, we need a test. We need a test and we need a ball. Let's go ahead and touch test unit. Testball.gd. Right, let's hop over here and open test ball and extend res add and let's go test.gd. Oops. Two slashes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make a ball in a minute. We're going to put it in res scripts ball.gd. So let's go ahead and make our first test, which is we can create ball. Ball.new certain not null b. All right, let's go ahead and run our tests. And null instance of null instance because we don't have a ball. So uh, we're going to make, uh, let's create a folder called scripts. And we want ball.gd. Okay, let's save that and run our tests again. And everything passes. All right, what does our ball do? Our ball moves. We need to be able to move. We need to be able to set a speed and a direction on the ball. So let's go ahead and test get set speed new assert accessors speed. The initial value will be zero and we're going to give it a hundred. Let's run our tests again. And it failed because it doesn't have a get speed and it doesn't have a set speed. All right, let's go ahead and add those. Let's run 
it again. We got null instead of zero, and we tried to pass it 100 and couldn't get it back. Cool. So now we need to make speed. Just set it to zero. Return speed. Speed equals speed. Save that. Run the tests again. Everything passes. Fantastic. All right, next thing is we're going to want to be able to set a direction. So let's get set direction. Assert accessors B direction. Um, the direction is initially zero, zero, and we are going to pass it vector to one, one. Let's run that. And it doesn't have them. And I don't feel like typing all that stuff again, so I'm going to go use my handy dandy, uh, which uh, accessors. And this on a Mac will create some accessors for a property I give it, and then it will also copy it to the clipboard. So I can say go.accessors direction. All right, and we've got that, so then I hop back over here, we go into the ball, and we paste that. And we have to make direction equals vector two zero zero. All right, and everything passes. Let's go ahead and see exactly what we got. Let's run that again. So assert accessors gets you four assertions, one that verifies that there is a get method named the way you'd expect it to be, a set method named the way you'd expect it to be, that the first time you call the get method, it returns a default value that you specified, and that calling the set method and then the get method will get you back the value that you passed into set. Some people don't like testing accessors, uh, especially when you've got uh, an IDE or something like that that will make all of your accessors for you. I think it's pretty important to test the default value because if that default value changes, then you'll get a failing test that indicates that the default value changed, which is probably why five other of your tests are failing. So I think that's important. Um, and just making sure that they're wired up the way you'd expect them to be, uh, I think is pretty important, which is why I made the assert accessors just so that that process was very easy to do in 80% of the cases. All right, now let's make the ball move. So let's test ball moves on process. All right, and then we're going to call simulate on the ball. Now let's go over to the methods. This is probably a better... Alright, so it takes in a number of times and a delta. And so this will end up calling process and physics process on a tree of objects. So we are going to call it one time and we're going to give it a delta of one. And then we should be able to see that the ball position uh, get position is equal to vector 2 uh, we start at 0 0 so we should be at 10 0 and we run our tests and oh balls a node Okay, uh, we are going to make it an area 2D. And I'm doing this because that's what the uh, Pong demo inside of the Godot demo projects. It uses an area 2D, and I'm basing this off that, so we're just going to go with that. So let's run this, and it doesn't move, which is what we expected. We got our failing test, so let's go ahead and say process. 
delta and what were we looking for? We were looking for our position to be 10, 0. So let's just go ahead and do set position vector 2, 10, 0. Let's watch this test pass. Wonderful. But we clearly got a problem here, so we got to make another test. Ball moves vertically on the process. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it there. We're going to change this to a 0, 1. And we are going to call it one time, but we're going to give it half. So just to illustrate how simulate works, we're going to expect this to be 5. Because we're going to call it one time with half a second. And so that should move half of 10. Okay, let's run this. And yes, we got our 10 0 back, which we knew wouldn't be bad. So now we got to figure out what to actually do. Doesn't like it. Well, yep. Speed. Uh oh. Nope. That's not it. Oh. New position equals that's what it is there we go everything passes okay this is ugly we'll come back to it later that's where we're making tests i can see one thing that's going to bite us in the butt here and that's going to be that i was planning on using the direction as a unit vector and so that means we should probably normalize that vector ourselves so that uh, we know we've always got a good value. Uh, we can't trust anybody that calls set direction that they're going to actually give us a normalized vector. And then uh, once we start multiplying things by the speed, if that vector is not normalized, then it's not going to turn out to be uh, things are going to start moving wonky. So let's go ahead and write a test. Set direction normalizes vector. And then we're going to assert that B dot get direction equals dot normalized. Let's run our test and that fails. Yep. So let's go ahead and hop in here. Hop into the direction. And we are going to say, I know that there is an is normalized. I'm not sure how expensive it is to actually normalize a vector, but uh, I'm not going to waste the cycles. So I'm going to say if not direction that is normalized, then otherwise direction equals direction. Let's run our tests again. Oh, geez. That's what it's yelling about. Hmm. Oh. Yes. We broke a test. That's what happened. Uh, set direction normalizes past, but getter setter test failed. So we got to fix that test. Let's put a normalized on that, and that should fix it. Okay. Good. Now we know that whenever we've got a direction, it's always going to be normalized. And that is good to know. All right, we got a ball. It moves. We got we to gotta run the ball. We got to see the ball move. Um, so what are we going to do first? Let's, let's go ahead and make a scene. 
let's make a scene. We are going to make an area 2D. Oh, there it is. We got a ball. Uh, let's start making a game too. Let's make a new scene. Put a node 2D there. New game. And we're going to say ball set speed 200. And ball dot set direction um, 1, 1. Let's make it go diagonal. And let's run it. And look at him go. That's great. Maybe we ought to run this in a way that we can see it. Uh, so let's turn that on and run it, and there it goes. <laughs> Hooray! We got a ball that moves. All right. Now, I wasn't happy with just having a shape that we could see, so I went ahead and added a draw method to the ball. It just draws a blue circle, uh, or the same shape, uh, same size as the shape, and then I, I moved the things around inside the game scene a little bit, put them off to the left, set a speed and direction, and look at them go. Wonderful, beautiful, well-tested Pong ball. Well, that is it. Stick around for the next episode. We're going to get into the walls. It's going to be great. See ya.